In San Francisco, and yeah. who are you? Brian, Brian Dexheimer. Yeah, and you work for? Seagate. And you've worked for him for 24 years? 24 years in June, yeah. And uh, first a disclaimer, Seagate sponsors my show, so thank yeah. you very much for You're all welcome. your support, because it Thanks enables for yours. us to go around the world and uh, see this in wacky industry <laughs> we're all in. <laughs> but we're here to talk about hard drives. We are. Hard drives and pretty shells. Yeah. With a little bit of innovation wrapped around them. And so Seagate today is announcing uh, what, a series of new consumer-based... Brand new lineup under the Seagate brand, all for consumer, and um, based around our two and a half inch and three and a half inch core technology, yeah. built for PC and built for Mac. And you were telling me that these things are going to sell for in the United States for about $200? Well, the half terabyte version of this new product that we've just launched, our Free Agent Go product, uh, you'll find on sale at uh, various different retail outlets for $199. Is that crazy? That is crazy. <laughs> when you started how, at Seagate, how it's big? It's a big departure from how, 24 years how ago. How big? T give me an idea. Just in one person's career, how big of a difference? What, think, think wash machine size, yeah. 300 megabytes. Notice megabytes, not gigabytes. $12,000. And so now Those are the first products I sold. There's almost a thousand times more storage on one of these. You're better at the math than me, but yes. So, somewhere around there. Uh -huh. right? And the price is dramatically different, obviously. Yeah. It's so crazy. the advancement of technology in a little bit more than a quarter of a century. It's just crazy. Yeah. Um, so what, what's cool about these things other well, than they look cool? <laughs> coolest thing is that people are having a, a, a number of needs for them, and, and that's being driven by all the content they want to bring in their home, you know, what they're creating, what they're dropping in their home, what they're dragging down the IP pipe. And so the low end of our product line today, really in the free agent series, is 250 gigabytes. And as we go up into the three and a half inch more desktop oriented products, we're up now to a terabyte and a half. And the cool stuff is, we're a company now that's got control of the core technology. We're able to bring the latest and greatest straight yeah. to consumer first. So a terabyte and a half drive, you'll actually be able to purchase in these enclosures FireWire, eSATA, USB at retail by the end of this month. And that'll be one of the few places on the planet you can get it. You can't get it in enterprise. You can't get it in uh, B2B um, channels of sale. You're, you're going to get it here first. And this is the first drive uh, type that's really made for the Macintosh, right? We focused on what people were telling us about the Macintosh. The, your previous drives worked on the Mac, but the software that was built into them really was designed only for Windows. And now the software is built for both Windows and Mac. Right? That's true, and we've tried to tailor the industrial designs too. As you can see in this one here, it would, would look, uh, if you can imagine a Mac sitting next to it, yeah. it would look quite good. And we have the desktop version here, you can see in the package product, and they're format for Mac. Uh, no software on these. Of course, Mac's got Time Machine now and OS X. And um, also combining our, our docking system with case in the two and a half inch Go enclosure. And that's something, again, the Mac users told us that they want full solutions and are willing to pay for full solutions. In the Windows version, we actually sell the drive separately and the dock as an accessory. So here um, we've actually combined, you can see the, the smaller cable, the case, and the dock all come with the Mac solution. Now th this is really cool because at home I have a Mac Mini with a bunch of drives, and my drives are uh, the old Mac store ones. They, they look a little ugly compared to these things. I mean, yeah. they're great drives, right? But these look really uh, much nicer in one of these new AV systems you have at home. I think they do. I think they're, they're a much better uh, visual match, and you know, they've got the illumination here that, that uh, breathes a little bit and tells you it's off doing something in that constellation. Um, the other thing about the Mac series is it was, it was really purpose-built, as I said earlier, in terms of all the way from the packaging, uh, to the industrial design, to the actual configuration of the product that we chose to put in it. So it serves two purposes now. The docking system allows you to have a desktop as well as mobile alternatives. So we've kind of crossed this chasm where before uh, and currently in the marketplace there's products available in this form factor really meant for mobility and products in this form factor, the larger form factor, really meant for desktop. Yeah. What we do here with the dock is recognize the need that with a half a terabyte now you can start to consider having a product that spans both needs, and we've given you a nice, easy user solution to go do that. Yeah. Are these uh, chainable so that I could have three or four of them hooked up to my video you'd system? Have to, you'd have to collect, connect them all. Through eSATA, they'd be chainable. 
and the, and the larger one through USB, you have to connect them individually. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, tell me a little bit about the challenges of making these. Why, why is Seagate worried about the, the way that hard drives look now? Because that, that was probably not something they cared about when they were. They didn't care when they were these. wash machine size. So yeah. We cared how many spare parts they had back then. Um, well, we care now because storage is relevant, right? Storage is relevant to the average consumer. Um, people are storing their pictures, their videos, their music, and they actually understand what storage is about. And as they understand it and they want to consume it, um, they're consuming it in various different forms and fashions, but it has to migrate from being an IT technology to a consumer consumable. And there's a lot of difference there in terms of the way that you think about industrial design, the way you think about packaging. As an example, when we went out and tested packaging, we had the original instantiations of these devices with a picture on the front and a cardboard box. We went out and tested that packaging. They said, no, no, what we want to do is be able to see the actual product inside. So we went to this plastic packaging. So there's a lot of points of innovation on the consumer side that consumer companies are frankly very used to. Yeah. But for an IT-based company, and certainly a technology-based IT company, it's a little bit more of a stretch. And so we really had to invest of ourselves in developing that insight and, and actually showing it in products. And of course, we've obviously got colors here too, which has come to be expected now in consumer electronics. Yeah. Now, since I'm going to be buying a lot more of these because the world is going HD, mm -hmm. at least in the home, and that's why I, I bless think you. That, yeah. I think a lot of people are going to be buying a lot of hard drives uh -huh. because you know you want to store some movies, you got to have some hard drives. <laughs> yeah. Um, what's the power uh, situation? Are you guys worried about how much power these devices take because they're going to be always on, always on a TV, that kind of thing? Not really. Really low idle consumption. I mean, less than a watt in idle, and all these are powered by the USB cord. So uh, when you get outside the desktop. Uh, enclosures, there's no need for AC power anymore. So I think in all the things that you're worried about in terms of power consumption in your home, this is going to be pretty low on the Pareto list. Yeah. How about uh, audio? Uh, sounds, um, sometimes when you get hard drives home, they make a lot of noise. Another, least, this one seems pretty quiet, but yeah. uh, how is... Another, another reason why people like this as a, quote, desktop form factor, that's one of the things that they told us. They said, look, we like that product. We like the bigger product. It's nice and big. It's fast but we don't like it's noisy, we don't like the fact it's got AC power, and it takes up a little bit too much footprint on my desk. So if you can make this, which has those attributes solved, it's lower power, it's very quiet, in fact you can't even hear it, it's 26 dB, makes no noise, um, that's a great desktop solution for me, and you keep my portability because I can still take it with me. Yeah. Um, where are you expecting to see most of the sales? Is it from gamers or from people using video or photographers? What? Well, I what, think what, the, you, what sort of trends yeah, are you seeing? Yeah, again, as part of developing this insight, we've really started to understand who's buying in the category, and there's clearly that part of the category that um, is what I call more of the power user, or voracious content consumer, and they're going to be very interested in our terabyte and a half and eSATA connections and FireWire connections and all the things we we view at what I'd see the high end of our product line. I think these products appeal really a little bit more to the mainstream and, and that crossover space between. I've got significant needs, but not tremendous needs in terms of content, but I really want usability, I want style, I want something that's simple. The other place we're going to apply it, which is really the big news for us going forward, is extensions and trying to draw new people into the category. Um, one of the great things about storage is while it's becoming more relevant, it's still very underpenetrated. So today only 17% of the households in the U.S. have an external drive attached to the PCs. 4% yeah. penetration worldwide relative to digital cameras. A lot of room to grow, but to grow there, we have to speak in a different language and try and reach out and attract some different folks. What, one place that you, I think a lot of people should buy an external hard drive is for backup, right? Mm -hmm. uh, because, it, like, I brought my laptop here. If my laptop hard drive died, I would lose a lot of stuff right. if I hadn't had it backed up on an external right. drive. How Are you guys putting software to help people back, back stuff up to, let's say, cloud-based solutions as well? Or? Not cloud-based solutions yet, but these come with a full suite of software that actually back up and synchronize automatically. So once you stick the drive in the dock, you're done. Um, you make your selection, and from there on out, you're going to be protected in whatever um, system you've got it hooked up to. Online is something that's still in our future. I think it will be a part of solution. It's still um, probably belt and suspenders kind of way to think about backup. So this yeah. is kind of the consumer equivalent of multi-site disaster recovery that you'd have in business, yeah. which is really what you're talking about. Yeah. And I think online will have that place. I think it's got to be a better integrated solution 
to really be successful for most consumers because you'll need to have them pay a little bit more for that extra level of protection. In order to do that, it's got to be presented in a more integrated way. Yeah, I'm just worried about that because it, you know when you started selling hard drives, nobody was storing photos and right. their kids' videos, well, that's and the thing. their kids' music yeah. or whatever on on these devices. Now, you know, I was just at the IFA show, this big consumer electronics show in Berlin, and they're selling all these little uh, HD camcorders, uh -huh. you know, and everybody's going to buy one and how do you? It's all got to go somewhere. It's all yeah. digital. It's no tapes anymore. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you got to store it uh -huh. on one of these devices. And then if you store it on one of these devices and your house burns down, all of a sudden all your videos go away. So I'm starting to think about how do we get multi-site, you know, backups and. And it's really hard. Most people don't think about it. You know, they don't well, you're at the top of the pyramid. So the first challenge most people have in those HD camcorders is getting it to a PC. Yeah. That's where it usually resides first. And then they start to run out of space there, and it opens up an expansion opportunity for us. And then they realize the emotional time investment they have, and then it's a protection opportunity. And then they realize that that protection opportunity is only as good as the hardware it's placed on. And then they get to your part of the equation, which is online. So you go down these paths, either in expansion, protection, or movement are the three main paths that we're developing products along, and they just continue to expand in terms of opportunity. Yeah. So it's a bright future ahead of us. Are you doing speci special versions versions of these to hook up to specific devices? You know, uh, today I'm in Gadget, TiVo just announced they're going to do mm -hmm. something with DirecTV next year. So I'm sure I want more storage on my TiVo than they give me. Mm -hmm. You know, they never give you enough, right? Um, so are you going to build devices that hook up to specific devices like that or specific, or like you, I just you got just a touched on, 3? Yeah, there you go. You just touched on one of the expansion vectors, right? So take that expansion path. We're expanding PCs today. No reason to say we can't expand DVRs. In fact, we announced a product two months ago called Showcase. It does exactly what you're talking about. And so we'll continue to you know, develop solutions for marketplaces. If the game console wants expansion, you can see them all ratcheting up capacity points yeah. inbred to the system at point of purchase. The beauty about what we do in storage is that we know that the storage life cycle runs at a different rate than any device life cycle. So yeah. whether it's a PC game console or DVR, typically those devices are going to have a much longer life cycle than the storage life cycle within it. And when those two things disconnect, I got an opportunity. What he just said was, your Xbox is going to fill up with video really fast. You're Especially they do a deal with Netflix, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And not, not just Netflix, but all the trailers and all the stuff that comes down from them and yeah. all the games that you're, you're now seeing. The games... And you're not going to buy a new uh, Xbox just to up the storage. No. no. You're going to buy one of these, right? So. Anything else that we need to know about the announcement that you're making or the specs or anything like that? On, uh, probably on not on the products. I think, you know, as I mentioned earlier, CD's going to reach out and try and grow this category a little bit. So for the first time ever, we're going to have a very concerted um, media outreach campaign that begins with the launch of the products on September 15th, but we'll um, actually hit a crescendo between Thanksgiving and Christmas. We'll actually, for the first time, be doing some TV advertising. So we're going to try and reach out and bring some new oh, people to the category. What, yeah. what kind of TV programs are you going to be advertising on? Uh, different. We're going to have a couple of different personas that we're after. We've done a pretty good job of, I think, modeling the people we want to attract to the category. So there'll be a more male-oriented uh, sort of persona and a more female-oriented persona, which today our experience is about 50-50 buying in the category. And we think that actually could be shifted the other way of people not buying in the category. So uh, TV shows like HGTV for the uh, female persona and maybe even some NFL games for the male persona. Very cool. Yeah. Well, thanks for uh, giving me a look, and uh, looking forward to getting a few guys on my uh, Mac Mini and my PlayStation. All right, see you next time.